Uh, John had asked me to resurrect the, um, uh, the London Dairy Economic Development Council, it's like its last committee, depending on what, this, uh, what the pleasure of the board is. And again, the uh, idea behind presenting this to the board uh, a few years ago was to um, you know, develop a, a committee or council uh, centered around economic development. Uh, and as you can see, the purpose and mission uh, statement that would, um, you know, that's been enhanced since the 2010 um, uh, purpose and mission proposal that was before the board, you know, just to accentuate the uh, encouraging the retention, expansion, welfare, existing local industries and businesses, as well as promoting for new industries and, uh, and also working towards uh, strategies, proposals, and policies that would positive, positively affect Londoners' economic growth. And uh, so th that's the um, proposed mission. And, um, and the makeup of the group is, uh, is what I, you know, is what is proposed up there. Two counselors, one planning board member, one LHRA, and three at large. And back in 2010, we had, uh, had seven members proposed, and, and, and that has not changed. So, and, uh, about so I'm just looking for direction from the board to see is this something you want me to pursue? So in talking with this with Andre, what I, I don't I don't think I talked about the LHRA person. I think I talked about a school board member um, because of um, I'm looking at the two form of government. I think two counselors because I think it's our job to drive revenue. So I, and we don't you know with two of us on it, I think we stand a better chance of um, you know getting alignment around everything we need to get alignment around. Um, in the past, a lot of what was done was we take one from the budget committee, one from here, one from there. I think the three at-large members make a whole lot of sense from the standpoint of that, you know, we don't know all the answers. So let's try to find some people that do. And, you know, and I don't know what the criteria of those people would look like. We'd have to talk about what we're, what we're looking at. So my only conversation with Andrew is, and the thought around it was is let's get it on the table. And let's try to, you know, come to some sort of resolution on it by, you know, by June about what we want to do and let's start moving forward because it's pretty obvious we've got to drive some revenue. So that was the thinking behind what I asked them to do. Yeah, if, if I might comment. I, I, um, if you look at the fact that we have three governments in town, if you, have, if you include the library and the, the uh, expenditures are getting close to $100 million all added mm -hmm. up together, and, and we are the only body that's responsible to be driving revenue into those, those three governments. I, I like the idea of having uh, a stronger partnership with the school board, certainly as the largest government in, in town, as, as having a, a co-seat, if you will, at the revenue table of helping to drive revenue in, into, the, uh, into these government bodies. I think that's a good idea. So. Oh, for discussion, so this is an open discussion. I'm not going to look for parliamentary procedure here. So, so what would be the general purview of the um, committee? J just basically getting. So, all right. So I can describe what the past committee did. Okay. So I'm still the sitting chairman, you know, because we don't have a committee anymore. So when we get a phone call, what happens is, is um, someone on the council, myself, someone from the planning board, um, Andre whoever's designated from staff, and if we have a member from the school board, would meet with people um, and be the, um, you know, more or less the welcoming committee to the, uh, to the town. That's part of the function of what we do now because we don't really have a committee. What we've done in the past is, is we, um, we took it by project. The last one was the economic development website was one thing that we put together with Andre. And we, um, you know, we, we uh, worked through that, developed it with him. The problem with it was, is once it was done, the committee went away, and there, were no, there was no longer any driver, you know, driving the committee. In, in, at least in my mind, the purpose is, is that we have to build the, we have to build the business of selling London Dairy, and it's Pettengill Road. It's um, some of the past things we've done is, is we've met with both the United States Senators and both U.S. Representatives. We've met with the Governor. Um, and we've had, you know, very, you know, um, high-level conversations about grants, about, um, you know, all different kinds of ways to go out and seek out money 
for example, with the Obama shovel ready plan. That was one of them that we drove from the Economic Development Committee and be able to drive that you know, all the way through to try to get money for that. And, and we, we only failed by just a little. So um, it's that type of thinking behind it. It needs a lot more, it, you know, it needs a structure. It needs you know, all those pieces. And we've never done that correctly because we haven't charted it correctly. It's not that we can't do it, we just have to charter it correctly. Is that accurate? That is accurate. So does that answer your question? Yeah, but you know, the things that you just to told me was is kind of, with all due respect, is, is we have staff that's doing that right now, or, or is mission to do that right now. So I'm not really sure, you know, why, you know, we would have another committee to do something that's going to... Let me, if, if I may, add, let me add my two cents. I, I think that the difference, it's a good point, Joe, but the difference is, it's subtle, is well, I think this body would be more inclined to set policy to, to be more of an executive uh, oversight and to really take charge of the marketing of the community uh, from a policy standpoint, whereas staff is more the, ex the execution arm of that policy, that, that they're the ones that when the rest of us go off to work, that that's their job is to execute the policy that we came up with. I, I mean, I would, I would like to see the uh, the Economic uh, Development Committee tasked with the thought or the idea of, does it, are we at a point in our development and the level of competitiveness there is among uh, the, the communities that are, that are seeking uh, tax relief through development? Uh, are we at a point where we need to engage uh, a partnership with a, a private marketing firm to help the community market itself uh, recognizing the strong competitive forces that are out there and to, to make sure that we have all the tools, all the marketing tools and the, and the latest and greatest in putting in our community, uh, making our community available to those potential developers that are considering where they should locate, where they should grow, and, uh, and, and that perhaps this committee could be the arm that either selects or, over, or has the oversight and gives the direction to that, that marketing arm. Uh, recognizing that the, the town staff uh, is good at, you know, a lot, you know, hundreds of, hundreds of competencies uh, that perhaps uh, we, we, could, we could use, we could augment those capabilities with the uh, advice and counsel of a, of a, uh, of a private uh, marketing firm to, to help uh, create a little, a little additional edge uh, in, the, in the competitive uh, workplace of marketing uh, one's community. So uh, I, I'm not saying that the, the town is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. I'm saying that, that there, are, there are private firms that specialize the, in this and that, you know, just like we, we hired a consultant to help us with the master uh, plan, uh, it would be on the similar lines of a, a private firm to perhaps and I'm not saying we should do it. I'm saying this maybe this committee should should take that task on to see if it, it's a good idea and to see where will we get the funding to do that. It's just that we you know so we get commentary from the public when we go and we have a um, and I'm sorry Andre's in the room but economic development person and we want to get a committee to do economic development and then we hire an outside source to do economic development. So it's like we're paying twice for something. The taxpayer is and I'm not trying to be fresh but I'm saying that. You know, when we have the job descriptions, we have departments, and, and, and they're doing these jobs already, we, we, we um, you know, it's kind of like we have a committee and then we hire a consultant to do it. It's people comment. I mean, I'm on the Master Plan Steering Committee, and I don't know how many times people have said to me, wait a minute, we already have, we're already paying that in taxes. We already have that in staff. Why are we, you know, I said, well, they do a different thing. And, of course, I'm in the committee so as a representative of the council, so I'm able to defend that you know, the best of my ability, but they're still saying, well, to, we, to me, we're paying tw twice. You know what I mean? So I just wanted to throw that out there as a thought, you know, it's... Sure, no, I see the partnership a little bit differently than time okay. sees it. I see, and I don't know, and I think I talked to you about this, Dave, is that I asked you to check to see if this is legal. Can we just pay a commission? We have a firm. I'm, I don't want anybody to pay for Pettengill Road in this town. I don't want anybody, but if someone goes out and lands XYZ company and they're a $10 billion company 
and they're going to pay, you know, five million in taxes, you know, is there an appropriate way to pay someone who brought them in? I don't know. I don't know if we can do it legally. I don't know the answer. You're talking about changing the way that we pay staff. No, I'm talking oh. about if someone comes and catches the big fish and brings them to Londonderry, we pay a commission. In addition to the in addition to the staff you're talking about. Well, it's, it would be somebody staff didn't even know about. Okay. See, I, I'm I'm not looking to pass any costs down. <clears throat> I'm looking to figure out how do we how do we win at this game. I don't know the answer. It, you know, and I know that these guys are trying. Yeah. And, we that's, and that's all I'm saying. And we talked about that. I mean, we desperately need the revenue. We talked about, mm -hmm. you know, um, having some kind of a goal um, and some kind of, and I think that's, that's great to be able to have, um, you know, if you go and get the fish and, you, you know, you can share in the profits. I mean. That's more how I see this committee is, is that staff has what we've assigned to them to do. These are the people who are helping us reach that 10 to 15 percent further in and basically get lucky. Because let's face it, it, everyone else wants the same thing we want. They want more revenue and they want to reduce the burden. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a lot of competition. Yes, Jim. Uh, I know the, it, it, the economic times are tough right now, but one thing that I've experienced is you've got to spend money to make money. And, and uh, good firms now are on the attack. Because what they're doing is, is, is they're looking towards the future two or three years down the road. So I think that it's extremely important that we see if we can find an outside consultant to help us with that. So we have to bring something different to the plate that these other towns don't have. Okay. Yes, Andre. It's your department we're talking about up here, so. Oh, yeah. I'll figure that out. You know, I mean, it's a, and, and I want this to be an open yeah. discussion because that's yeah. the only way we're going to find an answer. Quit well, and take the commission. And um, <laughs> oh, you make more money. <laughs> No, I, I guess um, with respect to what Joe was saying is that um, you're right. I mean, that's part of my duty. I mean, obviously, I am paid a salary to run the community development department, which includes planning, economic development, GIS, building, zoning, health, and all, all, the, all the above. There's a longer economic list. development is, is, is part of it, and that's something that, one, I enjoy doing. I enjoy getting out there. But on the other hand, I, when I see the value of the committee, and I did the same thing I, uh, that I'm, I'm proposing to you now in Goffstown, and it's still the standing committee, is that you have, se uh, you have whatever many, in this case will be seven, invested folks that are focused on economic development. That when I talk to somebody, I am the, uh, I am the professional. I am the ones that are going to let them know what all the projects are out there um, are, and all the means by which they can be successful in Londonderry. What you bring to the table is something that I don't have. You're a resident here, and you're the one saying to them, I want you in my community. There's one thing when I say it, and, and I think it, uh, and, and making sure that they get from point A to point B very clearly if they decide to come here. But it matters so much more when it comes from you. And if you're uh, beside me, and we're all working together on strategies to make Londonderry more uh, prevalent with regard to uh, uh, economic development, and we sitting down and we sit down and we talk about what do we, what strategies can we put in place so when we have those um, uh, meetings where, where I've been having over the last several months, where you know big people are coming in and, and their site selectors are asking, now, what do you have this? Do you have this? Is the town behind this? Is the town behind doing this? Let's get to a certain point where you say yes, yes, yes. You know what? I need to. Those are the things I need to check on because I'm not sure. You have a committee that has a strategy together that we're all committed and we're all, all working together, both the committee and the town council, because this committee will be a, uh, an advisor to the council and say, boy, this is a great program for London there. This is a great business that's in line with where we want to go. Here's what um, they're looking for. What are we prepared to do? And we have that strategy in place. There's no, there's no interruption in service. We can just tell them that. And if it comes from you, boy, it means a whole lot. I, I just, and just to finish that point, if I may, uh, Mr. Chairman. Sure, feel free. Just, it's, uh, it's an open discussion. Yeah, just, um, you know, I look at, as I said before, I look at economic development kind of like a marketing department in a business. And uh, it's a, really a full-time job, and I worry that if we um, have a com committee that has, you know, uh, part-time membership on it, people that are doing it on a volunteer basis, um, that that focus uh, will stray a little bit from the, you know, the full-time. We, we, we need a double full-time effort to try to, 
you know, bring people in, and it's and it's a and it's a wake up in the morning and and go to go to sleep late at night effort that you need in marketing nowadays. So that's kind of that's kind of the thing that I attribute it to. I don't know if, if if you guys feel it's it's not like a marketing department, but to me, again, you got to bring the re- revenue in somewhere. And um, if we're shifting some of that responsibility, and I, and I'm hearing, I'm not hearing that. I'm hearing that you're saying that you need additional um, uh, maybe guidance, maybe you know direction, support. Support, yeah. yeah. Um, I just worry about it uh, shifting too much to a, more of a responsibility, um, and, and it needs to be more of a day-to-day responsibility, a tw- you know, an eight eight-hour, ten-hour day responsibility. That's all. Tom, I I get a couple of points. Okay, <clears throat> and, and forgive my fixation on numbers, but that's what I do. Um, I've looked at the last 10 years from the annual reports, what the ratio is between commercial, residential, and, uh, and it's all the same. It hasn't changed. 1% up, 1% down, basically. The only, in fact, the only thing that's moved in the last five years is the AES and the utilities. It's the only assessment. Mm-hmm. Residential's down, commercial's flat. So <clears throat> with all the development in town, nothing's changed. So. That's step question one. Question two is, I, I think it's important because, frankly, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. But everybody talks about Pet and Gill, and everybody's got a different, different set of variables as to what's needed there. I think if this thing is going to have any um, effect, we need to be schooled in what it takes, basically, to turn that on. We hear $14 million, and you, you tell, tell any voter that, and I'm a voter, and you know what? We all, there's, there's, I think all the nothing, voters here feel the same There's way. nothing in it for me <laughs> to shell out $14 million in bond costs for 10 or 12 years before that flips and starts. Okay. The, you know, that falls on deaf ears. Okay. The, I, I think you have agreement on that. Okay. So we got to know what we need. We have to know how it, ha- how it has to be accomplished. And, and frankly, can it be accomplished by starting at the other end of the road where we don't have to have $14 million? I, I don't know these answers, but I think what, we, what this group has to be grounded in is we all have to be working on the same page with the same facts. We have to know what we need, how we can get it, okay? Because we know no, no company's going to come in and, and do this. They want us to fund it. And the town doesn't want to fund it, so somebody has to somebody has to make a move. And the town isn't making a move unless the voters approve it, and the voters approve it unless they see something in it for them. And that's not bad. That makes that makes them smart. Okay. So there's got to be something in it for them. We have to show them by the numbers that it will turn quickly, or it's not. It's a it's no sale. And the other thing is, who do we have to go to to get? <coughs> Funding. You know, we need to list the names, not like the Senator Shaheen's office came here today because, you know, they're coming here because they're probably up for re election or something like that. And nothing's going to happen until after November anyway, until we know who's in charge. So, I mean, it's, it's good to do. We've, we've, got a, we've got six, five, six months before, we, before anything has, is going to be able to be done because, you know, somebody's going to be governor and somebody who was governor isn't going to be governor anymore. But if this thing is going to be effective, we need to know what we got to do in increments. And, you know, and, I, and I hate to break it down like that, but it, when it's broken down like that, then you can see accomplishment or that we're not going anywhere. And that's the only way to judge this thing. Okay, so what I hear you saying is, as I've checked the <clears throat> understanding, I'm sorry, I'll just close on the stars. I'm hearing that well, from everyone what I'm hearing is is that if we're going to move forward we need a straw man that we can go through set the agendas set the charter and be able to see and set it over a 12 month period with an end game is what I'm hearing is that close yeah. Dave yeah a couple of points one is is uh, to Joe's point maybe this is a good analogy for you is that we're required in the law to appraise property and that's really a three-legged stool it's the town council, which you approve abatements. You establish the direction for the appraisal department through <clears> me. <throat> you have the appraisal staff, which takes care of 95% of the issues. And then we have to hire expert appraisals for properties like Granite Ridge. Community economic development is the same thing. 
what we're looking for is we're looking for a policy making body to give direction to the effort. We have the in-house staff that does the vast majority of the work and one of the items of the discussion is to go out and incentivize another leg of that stool to work on behalf of the town. We don't know if we can do it, but I think it's worth looking at. Regarding the split between commercial, industrial, residential, good information, but I think I think a more I think a more pertinent number, and I don't have this number in, in front of me, is the amount of square footage for commercial industrial from year to year to year. Because in the analysis you're looking at, that's impacted by changes in assessed valuation depending on what the market is doing. And it's also impacted by the amount of he can go out and get another $50 million in assessed property tomorrow for commercial industrial. But if somebody develops a, an extensive housing development that's valued at $50 million, the town's $100 million ahead, less service costs on the residential side, but the difference is not, is the, the ratio is not changing. So we've got to take a look at that as well. Pettengill Road, excellent point. And that's the reason why you haven't seen the Pettengill bond in my budget for the last three years because I think it's a non-style to request the count that the council recommends to the voters that we raise $12.3 million. How do we think it's going to work from my perspective? We need a fish in hand. We need somebody to come in and say, we will locate in Pettengill if, if, you, will, if you will commit to build a road. So the vision is between the sewer fund, the matching EDA grant, which we have very high hopes for if we do have a, if we do have a bird in hand, and also the balance paid, if we can't get a matching grant anywhere, pay it from TIF. Now, just to clarify again, TIF is essentially if you're paying $2,000 on your piece of property and you do a development of TIF and it goes, you're paying $50,000, that first two still stays with the town, the county, and the school. The extra 48 pays off your mortgage on the road. And our break even point is about a half million square feet of, of land, I mean, of development. So if you get a development up there for half a million square feet, then it becomes break even year, probably year two, because the lags between the assessment dates and the construction, year two breaks even, everything after that is, is, is a positive to the town. And you're absolutely correct as about incremental. We've had discussions with some property owners out there ongoing currently to see if they decide to put in some of the road on a smaller scale to make sure it's not done to impact the overall vision. One thing we don't want to do is allow construction of, for example, a two-lane road in such a fashion that when the, when the property builds out 10, 15, 20 years from now, we have to go back and redo all the work to make it a four-lane road. So we're having those discussions now. And the reason why towns philosophically into economic development is that it's very, very uncommon whereby you'll have one developer land which generate enough money to build the entire road. So therefore, we're looking at the incremental approach. We're making sure that that happens, that the road is constructed in such a manner that we don't have to rebuild it, we can add upon it. But you're right, there's a lot of moving parts. And you know, our, our best chance at that is uh, to get a sizable development. Because you know, I don't mind, if I could get, frankly, if, if, we, were, if we were successful securing a developer out there to build a, a commercial industrial facility, which paid for two-thirds of the towns, I'd be here advocating you go ahead and proceed to town meeting and say we've got two-thirds of it paid for. Because it's difficult getting somebody with all of it. Uh, but, you know, and, and finally, to Andre's point, the economic development person, is that as a staff member, I don't want staff making policy. That's why we're looking for the economic development committee. And Andre's got an excellent point whereby when people meet with us, we tell them the rules, the regs, we advocate for the community, but it makes so much difference when we have a committee of citizens going in there and saying, hey, we set policy in this town, and we want you here. Here's what we have approved. Town meetings approve an appropriation for the master plan. This development's in our master plan. It makes a huge difference for us. So it's really, it's not, to Joe's, to Joe's question, it's not a point of whether Andre does it or the committee does it or we hire a consultant to do it. It's a group effort on economic development from start to finish. Any? John, John, your earlier point about having uh, maybe some creative ways to compensate. Uh, Don't know if they're legal. Right, that, to, to try to accelerate. I mean, how powerful would it be if the council or the economic development committee could turn to a body and say, go get me a million square feet in manufacturing space in the next year. And if you do that, you'll be compensated with 
with X. Go get me a million and a half square feet in manufacturing space and you'll get X plus one. You know, if you had those, right now we don't have those tools available to us. We just kind of have to, we have a kind of a field of dreams approach. You know, well, maybe if we build a road, you know, people will come. I mean, we, we need to be much more, much more scientific, there's, much more business-like. Yeah, <laughs> we need to be much more business-like. I mean, we're all businessmen. We know how this works. Uh, and we just need to drive it, you know, to, to coin a phrase I know my own company uses. We need to decide if this is in our fast lane or not. This is in our fast lane. This is where we need to focus our attention, focus our resources, and make it happen at a faster rate than would normally happen in, uh, uh, in, in, with the normal forces of, of yeah, nature and so forth. Just one more quick point is that we talk about metrics and goals, and the, and the most recent one we had was about six or seven years ago. Maybe it has to be updated. We'll give Andre some more gray hairs, but Russ Tebow is a nationally known economist lives up in the Lacona area, and he did a study in this area, and he said that the Linden area should be attracting about 100,000 square feet per year. And I think the town, with all of us working together, has exceeded that, even in the worst of years. So we're doing well. Can we do better? Absolutely. Absolutely. To that point, excuse me. I'm sorry. Tom. Is the problem with compensating somebody like that because the town hasn't appropriated the money until he makes the deal? That might be. I've got to study that. Yeah, yeah. It was just an idea. You, yeah. you, you, you know, New Hampshire government. If it's new, people say, "Hold on," <laughs> you know. It may, it may be a great idea, and, and if it is, we, we have to find a way to make it work. So that's what we're going to be studying. I just don't know at this point maybe what the obstacles are. legislation. Or something. It's possible. It's absolutely Another possible. Another reason to have the reps come in and talk to us. I, I'm not kidding. I mean, you know, we yeah. we've got to get creative. When, when we're selling pet and yellow, for example, to the state and federal agencies, they Occasionally, we, we get a comment, well, we're doing some of the work, and you're getting all the money. And I, you know, I said, I'm not a policy-making body here. I'm just my own perspective. I've always advocating rewarding uh, risk with reward, rewarding risk. So if somebody's putting in some money, should they get a cut of the action for a certain amount of time? I think that's something the council ought to consider. Because right now, 100% is zero, zero. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you sure. know? The, uh, I saw, I saw you, Andrew. Yeah, the square footage that you were talking about earlier that you said is not, it's in a positive trend. Um, I'm wondering, uh, yeah, one of the other things that we should think about, too, um, just because we're discussing this, is, is how to identify, like, big companies that want to move out and try to identify. I don't know if we know about that ahead of time and be able to communicate with them. And We, we just had a big company move out. I mean, obviously, that's going to – the building is still – owned and this tax revenue is still going to be coming from it, right? But, I mean, sales aren't going to be flowing through well, the building, so. Well, there's, there's two comments on that. One is that there's a state law which requires, I think it's a federal law, right, also requires large employers to give us notification when they're leaving. That's usually the first time we hear about it because private businesses are close to the vests hmm. and they won't tell you, we're thinking about leaving, they'll tell you when they've made that decision. To try to prevent that, if we can locally, is Andre reaches out to businessmen who are in the community all the time. Yeah. Uh, foreign trade zone, different issues which these folks have no idea about, which may add value to remaining here in Londonderry. And Andre is always knocking on doors to maintain, to ensure we maintain those relationships. Realistically, many of those closure decisions are not to move from Londonderry to Manchester, Londonderry to Salem. They're a corporate decision made outside of London area, probably outside of the state, to move someplace else. And so as long as you make sure they're aware of what we have here in London area, that we can offer them approximately the airport, the foreign trade zone, then you know that's pretty much what we're focusing on now. Because again, I got a call from an industry that moved out last year and they said we're moving out, letting our employees know tomorrow decisions were made. And they, you know, they, that's, that's, that that's how private business works. You know, and, and the reason why I asked that question is I kind of I wanted to open the door to something else, and uh, I'm, I'm sorry to take too much time. But, floor, so please go ahead. but um, I did meet with a uh, uh, the chairman of the Chamber of Commerce for Derry, um, and I know that you were going to a meeting two days uh, after that, and uh, he's very interested in coming up uh, and, and, and speaking to us in regards to what the chamber can do for London Derry. Right now they're called the London Derry slash Derry Chamber of Commerce, but. These guys are the guys that know how to do this. They've, they've, they have connections in business. They know who to go to. They know, and usually, businesses will go to them to advocate for them on behalf, you know, 
or at least put it, uh, put them in a mediation between the town and the, the uh, business. So I don't know if that's another leg to this. I don't know if that's where we want to go instead, have our, our own kind of London area chapter, and, and maybe that's what we call it. I, 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 yeah. All great questions for that body. You know, um, because again, what we talk about, we talk about, you know, we talk about getting people to help us with this. I mean, the Chamber of Commerce, that's what they do, you know, and so. But to, 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 the, to the point is that, from my perspective, that's not replacing a leg. That's adding another leg. And as long as they're all coordinating information, you, you can have a centipede out there as far as I'm concerned. If you've got 100 different groups advocating for London Dairy, we're in much better shape than trying to have one or two or three different groups doing it. And it's a great idea. Do you have anything else? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, if Joe's point, I mean, that's the reason why we're a member of the Dairy London Dairy Chamber of Commerce, so we can get keyed in. And um, you know, they've called me. I called them. Um, you know, regarding you know what's out there, what's available. You know, uh, uh, how can they help us, and and and, uh, and and vice versa. I mean, what can London Dairy be doing to be a better member or to get our word out there about what we're all about? So that line of communication is open. And um, and from a you know, with regard to commissioning and, and um, you know, somebody who can bring in something, um, I, I, I just don't know. I mean, uh, as Dave indicated, that it's something new. I mean, I hadn't heard anything about that, although um, industrial corporations can be established by communities to operate as a separate arm, and how they compensate somebody to go out and do something that is that's derived from that particular group. I always wonder, uh, going back to, um, uh, the American Tire Distributors. I mean, that was a that was a, a referral from the state. We just pursued it, and we pursued it to a point where they looked at London Dairy and said, you know what, uh, we could have located anywhere in New England, but London Dairy was a place that they felt was best for their position. I don't know about the privacy, what uh, what the compensation in the private sector would be to landing an eight million dollar account, but I'm guessing it's probably going to be pretty good. Okay, one more comment. Yeah, one, one last thing. I, we've been talking most exclusively about uh, driving tax revenues, which is, I think, uh, should be the should be our focus. However, let's not leave out uh, jobs themselves. I mean, uh, it's mm -hmm. very hard to, to convince young people uh, when they uh, get out of school to settle in Londonderry because there's just not that many jobs around here for them, and they, so they're going to go to where the jobs are. If the jobs are here then they're going to stay here, or, the, or at least they have a better option of staying here. Also, with, with more jobs uh, in Londonderry, uh, I, I can't help but think it's going to help drive uh, real estate values in the local area as well, because we, we, have, we have suffered a little bit, and in, in some people's and their largest investment in their lives is their, usually their home, that we've suffered some loss of equity. Uh, it's just because of the general economy. If we want to beat the, beat the average, if you will, uh, if you have a, a lot of local jobs, that helps drive up uh, local residency and, and the competition for housing, and therefore real estate uh, values uh, tend to follow that curve as well. So, so I think jobs and real estate values are, are, are part of the equation uh, as we continue to try to develop uh, uh, this vital area. All right, gentlemen, if there's not anything further, I'm ready to summarize and move forward. Anything further? I just wanted to, uh, Tom just mentioned about the jobs. You know, just as a quick note, um, as far as the 100 employees uh, and centered around the construction jobs with uh, American Tire, the average construction job in New Hampshire pays $45,000 a year. And then for uh, employees for, um, for this particular industry, you know, pays on average about $39,000 a year. And you, then you multiply that by 35 to 40 individuals, and you're looking at an injection of 1.3 to 1.5 million dollars into our economy per year based on that payroll. Okay. And a couple of updates, uh, not on this topic, for, but for Andre before he departs. Please do. Uh, Andre, could you give us an update as to some of the activity now that's uh, nearing completion across from Elliott? With it, with it, there's four new buildings that look like they're almost ready to be occupied. There's a lot of trees that have been taken down for potential additional development. I know there's a, a new <coughs> restaurant in the Mr. Steer complex that's probably about to open. Can you update us on that? And also the, the discussion about the, uh, the Vista Ridge uh, development that uh, has been in the press recently. Could you give us an update on that? Sure. 
Uh, I'm assuming that you're talking about the uh, complex um, where Mr. Steer is located. There's a building being constructed right near the right near the road. Right. There's a little there's Bob's Emporium, and then there's a, a restaurant that's going to go in next there. But there's also this four large gray building. buildings that yeah. look like they're medical office buildings. Yeah, that's a, a proposal that was approved about, about three years ago from Bob Meisner, and that was supposed to be a office complex. And uh, right now they're finishing up the last building, and that's the one that's closest to the road that's being constructed right now. But um, uh, in talking with, I think the last time I talked to Bob was probably um, about mid, uh, about summertime last year, and he said that the occupancy rate over there is pretty good. It's been really good. Uh, the um, restaurant next to the Bob Beer, Beer Emporium, which is my, really my favorite place, I tell you, um, is um, that is, I think they had a snag with regard to uh, financing. I wasn't quite sure of the whole picture, but I, I know that um, they're still wor working on that. But that has been approved for a, uh, I think it was approved for an Irish pub in there. And um, I'm hoping that that continues to move forward if they can overcome, you know, the, the situation there. With regard to uh, the Elliott Medical Center, that's approved for 60,000 square feet, an additional uh, medical office space over there. And talking with Dick Agonost, um, and I, I think the last time I talked to him was probably in January, indicated that right now he's looking probably at the latter part of this year, the beginning of next year, to begin that project. Right now in Bedford, they started another office, medical office building there. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the Copper Door uh, restaurant on the corner of 114 and uh, Ronald One. They built that. They built the uh, credit union, I think is member first credit union there. But there's an office building going back there. They're going to complete that. Once that's completed, I believe they're going to move forward with the uh, London Dairy Project. And the, and the Vista Ridge development? The Vista Ridge development, again, that's a 109,000 square foot um, proposal. Uh, on two different parcels, you know, one has about uh, 60,000, the other one has about 40,000. Uh, the first public hearing of that was done, uh, was held last week, and, uh, you know, uh, actually, no, that was uh, April, the first meeting in April. Um, and uh, a lot of people came out to that, concerns with regard to, um, you know, traffic and, um, you know, how it's going to look at the end of the day. and. Um, and, and several other things that uh, we we took those comments. We met with the applicant on last Friday to at least identify what the issues are, and uh, so the, you know they're going to be pursuing that and um, and coming back. And they're been continued to May 9th, and so they're slated to come back on May 9th to um, continue that uh, site plan here. Good, thank you. Okay, so summarize based on what I heard from everyone here on the council is is that. It has been the stated goal of the council for the last several councils that economic development was the number one piece. Um, it's now come the time that I believe we need to uh, go ahead and put together a straw man model of what that might look like, what that charter may look like, what those members may look like, what the what the, the stated tasks and goals are based on what you've heard here this evening, gotcha. and bring that back to us. Um, when's our uh, when's how much time do you need? Next meeting. Next meeting. So bring that back to us for the next meeting. When is the next meeting? May Six. 6th or 7th. Okay. I'll be here. <clears throat> okay. Do you have any additional questions, Andre? No. I, I think I got clear understanding what the board's looking for. Okay. Thank you. I believe the next item on the agenda is the...